everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really nice reinforced gift box. Now I have made something similar before and I will link that in up here. It was a Mother's Day um, box that I done. But this time it has the flap coming over the front and the back. So it's just got a kind of a different finish and then I've finished it with that huge bow which I think really sets it off. So yeah, it's got a slightly different construction as that one but I will link that in as well because you may well like that one too. So this one I am making as part of the Social Paper Crafter magazine which is out today. So I will also link that in the description box below. And one of the um, features that I was asked to do for this um, issue was to do a Pinterest make. So basically we look at something that we see on Pinterest that we like and then we make it. So I found this box here. So you can just see it's got this really nice reinforced with the flap and the bow and that is how I've come up with this one. So there's my inspiration on Pinterest and here is my final one. And then you just open it up and inside you can see there I've also continued this lovely paper which is the first edition Happy Jolly Holidays. There it is. It's amazing. You will see me be using this now all through Christmas along with the Hell's Couple Ditch one as well. But this is just gorgeous. Yeah, Jolly Holiday. So that's that one. And then, yeah, there it is. So it's a really, really nice one to make. And then that just comes down so it doesn't completely come down to the bottom there. You can see it just so you can get both bits of the ribbon. And it's just a really nice, this would be perfect for a nice silk scarf, a necklace, um, some like leather gloves or just normal like knitted gloves, all kinds of Christmassy gifts, like I said, jewellery and, you know, even fancy chocolates and stuff like that. It's a really nice six by six size inside, so it's a good one. Okay, so to make it, you are going to need, so I've already gone ahead and already done my kind of topper and I'll go through the measurements for that in a bit but I finished it with this also amazing stamp which is by Woodware and I just grab it behind me here you'll see this being used a lot as well and it's the Woodware Craft Collection Clear Magic Singles I do have a lot of the Woodware um, stamps because they're just so nice they're photopolymer and they just stamp beautifully I mean you can see that and it's I wanted big Christmas sentiments this year to put on tags and things like that so I've got Merry Christmas Happy Christmas and Seasons Greetings so yeah really really good and again all of this and all the supplies will be linked on my blog and you'll be able to find that okay so again I'll go through those measurements when we get to that bit along with that but what we do first of all is get straight into the box so there's actually two parts so the box is on its own and then the lid and the base are separate as well so it does become a very very strong gift box so what you want to do is with a piece of 12 by 12 I'm using plain because I'm decorating it with pattern paper on the top but there's no reason why you can't use pattern paper for this so a piece of 12 by 12 and you just want to score at one and a half and three inches on all four sides okay so one and a half and three and again one and a half and three and then lastly one and a half and three Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, so I've burnished all of my score lines. So now we're going to cut into this just as we would with any reinforced gift box. So you always will have four squares in the corners here. See the four squares? Okay, so start on any side, it doesn't matter, but we're going to cut up both of those score lines to the second score line. So down past this one and to that one there. So you're cutting those kind of four squares, so they're just kind of hanging now. So I've got two there and two there. Then I'm just going to rotate it and I'm going to cut the outer ones completely away. So those two now will be away like so. Okay. And then this one here just cut off. So now we're just left with one one by one square. One and a half by one and a half square, sorry. Just in the corner like so. Okay, I'll just hold that there so you know what you're doing. All right, and again I'll go across to this one and cut down again both of those score lines so down to the second score line again like so turn it to the side and totally remove the outer two and then just remove that one there okay so again if I just turn it back and lie it down that is now what you should have is these two like this 
you'll have two long sides here and then this one. Then you're going to rotate the whole thing round so that's now facing away from you and repeat again. So I'll show you again in this corner here. So you're just cutting up down to that second score line and again the outer ones you're completely removing and then that single one. Okay, and then again on this one here. Okay, so that is now the shape that you should have. Now when you've done that, just go around on all those one and a half by one and a half inch um, squares and just take wedges off of each side so they look more like that shape. Okay, so I'm just going to do that on all four. Okay, so you can see now I've got these little tabs. Okay, and then what I also like to do is just very, very slightly on the outer long ones is just take a little kind of slither off. I'm really almost just removing any score line that may be visible because this is going to be folded in on itself it can be quite kind of thick within that corner so just by taking off these little bits will just take off any you know kind of bulk that you may have so just like I said it seems you know minimal but it will make a difference and again that one there okay so if I just keep that there for the minute, that is where you need to be, okay? Now those of you that do this all the time, straight away, you won't even be listening to me now, you'll just be straight into it. But what you want to do is add glue to the tops of these four tabs. Now you can do them all at the same time if you want. I always tend to do them one at a time. And you can also use um, double-sided tape here as well. But you just want to pop some glue just on the tab there. And then you're going to fold that down and bring a side up around and just hold that there for a minute while it all sticks down okay and there we've got a really nice right angle make sure you don't go over you're not pulling it in or anything like that it's got to be a nice sharp right angle and then all your angles will stay nice all the way around and it'll make folding all of this in a lot easier as well someone's screeching their car outside if you just heard that it scared me <laughs> okay and then again with that one i'm just going to fold it down and bring around the other side there and just repeat that on all of your corners okay so that is now where you should be so you have all your corners stuck down there I think that one's still a bit wet there we go so now what you want to do is pop it on one of the sides it doesn't matter which one and just put glue all inside where the tabs are there just pop some glue in there and you don't need to go right into the corners or anything like that just enough glue to just hold this down so now you're going to fold in one of the sides Okay, and then with my bone folder, I'm just going to take that in there and just rub that down and just spread out that glue. And you can really crease and burnish the side of your box as well. Okay, so you can see there you get a really nice side. Now once my glue dries, that will be really, really strong as well. So then go around and do the next one again. Just splodge the glue inside like so and fold in the next one and just repeat that on all of the four sides okay so now we have a nice strong box now these reinforced boxes are always good if you've maybe not got a very very thick card so if you imagine you're folding them over on each other which is making them thicker so it's a good way for you to make stronger boxes um, that way then also we'll make the base strong now because it's also going to be stuck on more card in a minute but this um, paper that I'm now going to pop inside, this is five and three quarters by five and three quarters, so it just gives you a quarter inch border all the way around. But that will also add more strength. Now you could have, you know, some something personalised there if you wanted. So whoever lifts the gift up, it then says something. It's entirely up to you. But I'm just, I wanted to use all of that. It was a 12 by 12 paper pack, um, paper that I've used, so I just like to kind of get as much out of it as I can and then the rest I've fussy cut so I've actually fussy cut all these crackers out of the leftover ready for another project okay so just move that around so it's nice and straight there we go so that is our box okay really nice so I'm going to leave that to one side now and just kind of let that set and then we can move on to our lid and our base so grab your scoreboard okay so first of all we are going to do the base so this is a piece of nine and one eighth of an inch by six and a half okay and what you want to do is if you've watched my other tutorial where I used the green card here to show you how to 
basically when you need to kind of make something either go around something or go inside something but you need it to be a really really tight fit you usually need to pull the card out a little bit and by using this green card here which is just a piece of cardstock that I folded in half pop it into the corner of your scoreboard and then pop your cardstock up to the to but like butt it up to it then remove the cardstock card stock and you will see a tiny piece of your scoreboard that's what you want okay so I just usually you've seen me in tutorials before I just pull the card out slightly you can do that if you want but you need to make sure that you're consistent um, it doesn't really matter too much because we're only doing it once on this piece and then once on the other piece but if you've got that piece that I told you to keep then use that for this so I'm going to pop my green card in there and then pop my cardstock and then I'm going to remove that and you want to score at one and five eighths of an inch okay so one and five eighths like so and then just push that cardstock back in so it's nice and flush and you're going to score at seven and five eighths of an inch okay so just those two there now what that's going to do so if I just fold because this is our base that we're doing so I'm just going to burnish and again that one there like so when we get our base now we can sit that inside and that card perfectly wraps around this base okay see there you go once it's stuck down you get a really nice kind of wrap and that's just because we extended this base here so this width this distance now from here to here is six and one sixteenth of an inch okay so it's that sixteenth inch of a bit I am preparing a tutorial on this because when I asked you lot if you would like me to do an in-depth tutorial about measurements and all that kind of stuff you a lot of you have said you would like to and I've received quite a few emails as well so because this is six by six we need this to wrap around and if you kept that at six it just wouldn't look it would buckle and it would just wouldn't look nice but by just extending it by that one sixteenth that little bit it will just give you that nice wrap there okay so that is going to sit on the bottom make sure I've got my crackers facing the right way this back piece we are going to stick flush against the back and this piece we're going to keep down for the time being because we're going to conceal our ribbon behind it or whatever it is that you may be using but we will get to that in a second so then you want to grab that other piece okay and this piece here is eight and five eighths of an inch by six and a half and we're going to do exactly the same thing so grab that piece of cardstock pop it inside here in the corner I'm just resting my cardstock in there and then pull that away and you're going to score at one and one and five eighths yep same again so one and five eighths of an inch and then push it back in and score at seven and five eighths of an inch now this one's slightly shorter at the end so that's the difference between the two if you do get them mixed up this one will be shorter and that's because and that's the longer piece is the back that shorter piece is this piece here okay so let me just burnish that nicely like so right get rid of your scoreboard that's everything done there okay so now we can start putting it all together and decorating it now that shorter piece at the front I like to just round off my edges so I've just got my corner punch here you don't have to really doesn't matter you might want to decorate it with some of the metal um, corner protectors as well you can do that but there we've got that so this is the bottom make sure whatever it is that you've got facing you this is the back this is going to stick directly down this back piece is then going to stick over the top so we've got like a quadruple enforced back there because there's four pieces of cardstock all together and then this will go and sit perfectly and this is what I mean about having that really flush once that's all stuck you've got a really flush wrap around that box that will sit over the top like so and that's going to be our lid but we're going to reinforce that obviously as well so first of all I would say put your glue all on your base okay so I'm just gonna do that okay and then sit it in and it will sit perfectly from score line to score line but then what you want to do is make sure you've got a quarter of an inch overhang on both sides because this is six by six base this is six and a half wide so you'll have quarter inch this side and a quarter inch that side so 
just make sure you got all your corners really stuck down. So I'm just using my ruler there just to get right up to all those corners. Okay, so again, once that dries, but that's a really, really strong base there. Okay, so it won't matter at this moment because they're both the same. That one is coming over ever so slightly, so I am just going to go along and just take a little slither. Just a tiny bit. I just want to get it flush there. You're not going to see this, so don't worry if it's a little bit wonky. I just want to tidy that up a little bit just so it doesn't interfere. There we go. So just have a look, just make sure, yeah, that's better, it's nice and, and flush. Okay, so which way was my crackers? That way. So now I need to stick down glue on here. Don't stick the glue on this piece because it's longer and you're more likely to you know, have your glue kind of going over to this bit which is going to be exposed. So always stick your glue on the actual box itself because that's all the area that you need to be stuck down. Okay, and then just fold that bit over. Pop it on its side and again, just use your bone folder there just to kind of apply pressure and just get that all nice and stuck down. Okay, so you can see now, it should be nice and flat, nice and flush, and again, really strong. Now what you want to do is this one is going to stick over the top at the back, so that shorter piece will be here at the front, okay? So what you can do with this piece is you can put glue on all of that because it is going to stick to the back. Okay, so I'll pop it on and just line up your score line so it's nice and flush, and then put the back down. You can obviously, that's why I like using the wet glue because you do have that little wiggle room. And again, pop it on its side. You can just make sure it's all nice and straight. Okay, so now that is everything stuck down, and when I bring around the front there, that is completely flush. And once we've got our lid on as well, that will all lie nice. Okay, so yeah, really, I think, straightforward to make. So I'm going to add this on now because it just makes it sit better so this piece here the white piece because remember this inside is six by six but this is longer it's still six inches that way so these aren't exact squares so the white piece is six and a quarter by five and three quarters and then the pattern paper on top is six by five and a half okay and then that just sits on and it has the same frame there that it does on the white as it does on the pink so I'm just going to stick that down and like I said that sentiment was the woodware one and I've just used some of my uh, rectangle stitched frame dies to decorate <laughs> that was really hard for me I was really concentrating on the glue <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say okay and then Get that all nice and stuck down. Okay, so see what I mean now? That just drops down because it's got the weight. So you may want to do one of those big bows on top. That would look really good, actually. I'll link that up here. The big bows. If you're new to the channel, then you'll want to maybe check this out. Otherwise, you guys, you know what I'm talking about. But that, can you imagine, on top would look really, really cool. Um, okay, so that's that done. Then it's just the ribbon now. Now, you may want to add magnets. So you would put your magnet here. You'd have to put them pattern paper over the top and then again a magnet and then conceal it but that would work really nicely there as well but because it's a Christmas gift my husband does pry and everything I'm making now is for family and for my husband they're all going to be you know gift wrapping you know boxes and bags for the gifts that I'm going to be giving to people so you know whether my husband will have this one because it's pink but he will he most probably have this one here or someone will um, what you can do and what I tend to do, and I say this and some people are like, no, 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 no. I will actually put sellotape under here so that is stuck down. So even if someone undoes the ribbon, they're going to have to rip it and then people would know that they've gone into it earlier. Um, I don't expect these to be kept. It's the whole point for me at Christmas is you rip your presents and you get into it and you have fun. So, yes, I'm not precious, as you can probably tell. <laughs> I love doing this, but... Um, do I expect it to all be kept? No. Mini albums and things like that are different, but when it comes to wrapping and gift boxes, that's what it's for. So anyway, I've gone on there. Right, so I'm using a hole punch, so I'm just going to pop this on here. Let me just check. Yeah. So you just want it as centred as possible. So this will be at three and 
what did we say this was? This was six and a six and a half, so three and a quarter is where you want to be popping your Velcro or like I said, hole punch magnets, whatever it is. So but I'm just eyeballing this. There we go. Um, then what I also done is I die cut a little circle here and I'm just gonna pop the same hole just in the middle with the hole punch there and then that will just decorate it. Now you can use your um, metal eyelets or grommets but I just liked this. I just thought it's another nice way to show you how you can decorate even your kind of hole punched holes. If you don't have, you know, things like this then that's another way to do it. So you could just pop one of these on if you wanted to just to give it a little something. Okay, so I'm going to just get that stuck around there. Okay, so that's all stuck down. Now, I also forgot to mention, because this is going to be stuck once we've popped our ribbon in there, so that will all be concealed, we need to conceal the ribbon on the back of this piece. So you just need a strip here, and this is three quarters of an inch by six and a quarter, okay? And that will sit inside like so. Now, I just need to round off my corners again there, just so it all matches up. If you see now, that's going to just go inside nice and neatly and it will just conceal that ribbon so now we can do that bit next so I'm going to do the bottom first so you need to make another hole punch and for this one here see I, this is when I use the screw punch so because I come down further then my hole punch will allow me so again you want to be at three and a quarter so in the middle and I'm coming down to let me do it and then I'll tell you so this is one inch, bang on, okay? So just come down one inch, because basically when that flap comes over, can you see there you want the ribbon to be able to come out and then go around, all right? So if you don't have this, just grab a little pin thing here and pop that on and use your pokey tool and go through and do it that way. Because you're using ribbon, you're not really gonna see whether it was a hole punched hole or not, so you know I wouldn't worry too much. And then like I said, you could also pop one of them on there as well and that will tidy it up okay so I've got my ribbon this is really thick two inch ribbon this was on a 12 meter roll from the range and I got it last year but I'm sure they will still have more in there it's such a bargain it was a pound as well it's amazing and it's really nice fabric so I'm going to be having 16 inches so you'll need two lots but it depends what you want how big your bow is and everything else so that's just what I'm using so I'm just going to squeeze the ends, pop it in, and just kind of help it through because I don't want to rip my hole. Once it's in place it's fine, like so. And then pull it back out until you've just got a little bit sticking out, really small amount, like half, a, half an inch, okay, you can see what I've got there. And then I'm just going to grab my hot glue. Okay, and then I'm just going to run a bit of hot glue around the top there. I still haven't got any clear glue sticks yet, but it doesn't matter, you're not going to see any of this. And then I'm just going to stick, try not to get it on my fingers, but you want that ribbon to be as flat as possible. You want it really, really flat, so I'm just really pushing it into that glue. The glue gun wasn't completely heated up, so it wasn't actually, it was warm enough to be obviously used, but not to burn me. Don't worry, I haven't got asbestos fingers. <laughs> Okay, just cut off any loose bits there, like so. And then I'm just going to use my normal wet glue, make sure that's all lying nice there, and pop my glue all on this piece, because obviously, again, you know that that's the area that needs to be stuck, like so. And then I'm just going to put some hot glue, again, just on that fabric, because hot glue is really good to stick, and then just focus on that bit first where that bulk is and just really push it down and then just make sure the rest of that's all nice and stuck down. Okay so now when I bring that up there's the ribbon all nicely concealed and you see what I mean you wouldn't know if you'd used this or not you can't tell because the ribbon's so thick. So now I'm going to do this one and do exactly the same thing so again grab my ribbon you want to go in from the front and just again that will protect it, that little white circle that I've put on. So that went through really easily. Again, just make sure you've got about half an inch just kind of underneath there. 
probably even a little bit less because it's a thinner. You just want enough just to stick it in there so I'm just going to pop some of my hot glue on the bottom and then just stick it down making sure it doesn't go over that score line. Okay you can see there what I've done so it's just stuck within that area there. Okay and then again what you want to do now is with that piece there so I just want to make sure I get all those little loose hairy bits there. So I'm going to add some glue to this like so. I'm going to add some hot glue again on that fabric and then just get that stuck over the top there. Okay, so that's now all stuck down. I don't know why that's just appeared. Let's pop that over there and then you just need to tie it up. So that's it done. So, I mean, that looks like quite a lot, but once that bow's all tied up, then I'll tidy off the ends and stuff. But that is how you make the box. So I'm just going to get my bow done. So there you have it really really cute i love the bows on these i love big ribbon bows they are a bit of a bugger to tie but once you kind of fiddle around with them a bit and stuff they look lovely and um yeah really like it love the papers love that beautiful big sentiment there and it's just a really nice reinforced box that's definitely going to get used so i hope you've liked this hope you check out the social paper crafter magazine which again will be linked below there's going to be lots of christmas inspiration in this issue so do go and check it out and i will be back again soon with another tutorial thanks for watching bye